Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to In Diaspora Community Conversations. This is a monthly program with Sri's daily global show. I'm Sri Srinivasan, I'm visiting professor at Stony Brook School of Journalism and honored to convene this conversation once a month with our friends at In Diaspora. Today is In Diaspora Comedy Night, and we have four fabulous comics to help us understand what's going on in the world and to take your questions. I'm going to be joined in just a moment by M.R. Rangaswamy, founder of In Diaspora, community leader, all around good guy. And you will get a chance to talk to all of us and ask questions. We're live right now on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on LinkedIn. Please tell us where you're watching from and please share this right now with your friends and family. They can watch live or they can watch later on all of these channels. Please tag your friends. Let me first say hi to MR and then we'll be joined by our comic friends. Hi, MR. Hey, Sri, how are you, my friend? Great to see you, always a pleasure. And tell us how you decided to put together this comedy night. Yeah, you know, I mean, these are the COVID days and people are down, some people are depressed, uh, people are unemployed, people have kids running around during meetings. I mean, these are really tough times. And, and so as we were thinking about how to close the year and looking ahead at 2021, in a much more optimistic way, we decided let's let's have some fun. Let's forget our reality for just an hour and let's laugh, let's scream, let's have some fun, let's make jokes, let's let's make the world a, a place of laughter and love. And so that's what made us kind of do this show. So this is fabulous. So oh, I'm thrilled that we could we can work together. We do this every month where we pick a topic and get to show off the amazing convening power of In Diaspora. Let's take a minute and tell everyone who's new about In Diaspora. Yeah, so again, uh, you know, the whole year has been uh, crazy for us as well. Everything went online. So we had a big forum planned that went virtual. We had a philanthropy summit planned that went virtual. The good news was we could get a lot of speakers. The bad news was we couldn't meet anybody in person. But as a community, we came together online and we were able to commiserate, share stories, see each other on Zoom or uh, platforms like this and really get together as a community and make sure that everybody was OK. We've had great programming this year. You know, we had Vivek Murthy, the, 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 who's going to become Surgeon General again, talk about loneliness. That was a timely one. We had Deepak Chopra talk about mindfulness in these stressful times. We had so many great speakers join us and help us as a community. And the outpouring of support really was evidenced by our Chalo Give online campaign that raised you know, 1.2 million to feed migrant workers in India and the US. So a lot of good things have happened and I'm happy to close the year on a great note with a lot of fun today. Yeah, it's so important to have some fun. I tell folks that we have to laugh at least a little bit, otherwise we'd be crying all day. That's how bad things have been, but this is such a great opportunity for us to uh, laugh and to hear some stories and share some stories as well with people watching all over the world. Please continue to tag your friends, tell us where you're watching from, and let's bring our first guest on stage. Maybe first we will have MR just explain what the plan is for this conversation. Absolutely. So as you can see, we have four incredible, talented co comics. I mean, they should have been doctors or lawyers or engineers, but they chose a noble profession. So we're going to hear from them, hear a little bit about their life story. You know, we have two amazing women, you know, Vijay Nathan and Daya Lakshmi Narayanan. And we also have two guys, Rajiv Satyal and Anuvab Pal. And so we're going to kind of interview each one for a couple of minutes, show a great clip of theirs and then kind of get all four involved together as a group after we finish them off individually in every matter of that word. So <laughs> we should get up Vijay first, I think. All right, let's say hi to Vijay. And everyone, please share this with your friends and family. This is gonna be a wonderful hour with our friends. Here we go. Please, everyone, welcome Vijay. Hi. Hey, Vijay, great to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Yeah, you performed at Indiaspora a few years ago, and it was 
physical and in person, man. We had so much fun with your jokes. And that's why we said, I thought of you immediately when we wanted to do this program. So how are things with you during COVID? I mean, things are okay. I'm wearing a bra. That's a good thing. I see the two of you dressed up a lot. So go for that. And I'm drinking to forget about the year that you guys described, which was the perfect setup for a comedy show. <laughs> so... Um, but you know, I'm just kind of getting through it. Like I think everyone else is, uh, I have three step kids and attempting to work it from home and school them from home. Cause they're at home full time, like for school has been, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, I think, um, I'm failing their classes for them cause yeah. I, I'm, I'm not good at it. I mean, one of the compliments I heard about you from Russell Peters was he said you're one of the two most amazing comedians to watch. So that's that's uh, that's phenomenal to get a, a testimonial from him. But I have a question for you. OK. Are you mistaken for Mindy Kaling by any chance? What? <laughs> yes, I am. And I've actually been for a long time before she was. Uh, famous. We were in New York at the same time and we had shows in theaters that were very close to each other. So people thought I was her and they treated me much better because they thought I was her. <laughs> so, um, but I do get, uh, people are always like, do you know that you're like that person? And, um, and I guess my sister also, cause we're all, uh, Mindy is South, uh, South Indian. I'm South Indian. And my sister, um, like looks like her, but she's a doctor. And so like people are like, you know, like on their, like their, their loved ones are sick. And then the, the family's like, you know, I have to tell you that you remind me of Mindy Kaling. So I don't know. It might just be everyone in my family looks like Mindy Kaling. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Like, why didn't you become a doctor or a lawyer? Why the heck did you choose comedy? Uh, um, I think, I mean, from a young age, I, look, I tried to do the, the immigrant kid thing. Like my oldest sister is a doctor. My middle sister is a lawyer. I'm the youngest, you know, my dad, like, this is a joke. My dad would brag. He's like, this is my daughter, Shanti. She's a doctor. This is my daughter, Indu. She's a lawyer. This is my daughter, Vijay. She's adopted. So I was kind of, I was the youngest. So I think I was allowed to sort of I don't know, maybe they just gave up by the time I was born. <laughs> they had all the high expectations, like you should be getting A's and all that stuff. But, um, you know, when I, by the time I was in college, I, I did English literature um, and my dad was like, okay, that's okay. Cause you're going to do pre-law. Um, but, you know, it, it just, it just wasn't me. Yeah. No, no, you, you look like a comic for sure. I mean, you act like <laughs> I don't know how to take that. Do you, are you saying I look like a clown? Are you calling me a clown right now, MR? I mean, I might have gone overboard on the lipstick, so I don't know. So, let me ask you this. What was the craziest thing that's ever happened to you on stage? Oh, that, whoo. <laughs> the craziest thing that's ever happened to me on stage. That's a hard question. Um. I'm going to say one of the most memorable things. And that's um, it, it. So this was why I, I was, um, I was uh, opening for Russell Pre Peters in DC and it was a few, like I, it, there were three nights that I was performing with him. And I told him that my mom was coming, you know, on the next night. And I was like, ha ha, like, you know, don't, don't do, you know, all your penis material tomorrow. And Russell, he has that material, but he, but he also, I mean, he, doesn't normally talk about that. He always talks about, you know, travel and his experiences with other cultures. And the night that my mom came, he's like, oh, your mom is here. And he spent an hour on his small penis. Uh. So, so I would say that's one of the most memorable. Um, well, another time was when I was performing at the DC Improv and Dave Chappelle just dropped by at the end of like, you know, he just, he wasn't the headliner. He just showed up and 
he did an hour after the headliner was done and my parents were there and my mom was just like, you know, my parents, they were always the UN of comedy. Like they would come to every show and they would insist on meeting like, you know, every person. And, um, and he had just been talking about, you know, uh, like, you know, getting some women after the show. And I just was like, oh my God, my mom is, you know, saying you did a very nice job. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's great. So I know today we dispensed with a live show because it's so hard on on these platforms to do. But we got a clip uh, that we're going to show. Set it up for us. What 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 transpired there? Well, this clip is um, it is from a uh, like a longer show, uh, and it's from a piece that I did for NPR's in, um, NPR's Snap Judgment, and it really. I wanted to do this story uh, talking about growing up um, as a repressed uh, Indian American <laughs> in, in a, like in a very sexually repressed household. So, um, so I think that sets up the clip. Okay, great. Let's uh, let's roll the clip. Uh, my my parents are from Tamil. Oh, that's not me. I was little. I loved riding in the car with my mom because she always let me control the radio. Whenever my dad drove, we had to listen to the news. But when it was just me and my mom, that station wagon was my personal disco. And I became Madonna. Lucky star, material girl, like a virgin. That was my favorite. One time I sang the song extra loud to see if my mom knew what the words meant. Like a virgin touched for the very first time. Like a v uh was as far as I got. One hand on the wheel, the other at my throat. She said, Vijay, you are not like a virgin. You are a virgin. My sisters and I weren't allowed to talk about or think about sex. According to my mom, sex is only for the Americans. <laughs> Indian girls had rules. One, no haircuts. Long hair is traditional and must be braided at all times. Loose hair means you're wild or a witch. <laughs> Two, no tampons. They're only for prostitutes. <laughs> or white girls. <laughs> Three, no boys. They're only for prostitutes. <laughs> or white girls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was terrific. I, I can't wait to go catch one of your shows soon, Vijay. We'll, we'll see you back in a bit. Okay, Thank great. Thank you. Great. Uh, now we're going to have uh, someone uh, many of you might recognize uh, from his uh, facial hair. Uh, so let's bring up uh, Rajiv Satyal. Hey, Rajiv. Oh, my God. Did you shave? To oh, no, no. You got eyebrows. I don't have eyebrows. Okay. Oh, we're the opposite. Yeah, opposite, man. This is cool. So how are you, my friend? I know I'm you. doing well, my doppelganger, I guess, in 20 years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I read about this uh, this thing about you, and it was crazy. You perform in all seven continents. That's right, and it is actually on all seven continents. It's funny that you say in, because as we approached Antarctica almost exactly a year ago, I went with a group of Indian doctors. People out there must know Oppi. And I hitched a ride with a bunch of oppy people and no touring company can promise that you will get onto the continent of Antarctica. They'll just say within the Antarctic circle and Metallica became the first band to perform in Antarctica, but they never actually made it to the continent. They performed on an island within the circle. So it became this crisis of prepositions and positions. Like if you perform on an island in the circle, is it still on the continent? And luckily we made it to the actual continent because if you perform on Manhattan, you're not really, you're in America, but you're not on North America. You perform in Japan, you're in Japan and you're in Asia, but you're not on Asia. So it's funny that you said on. 
I finally <laughs> on to Antarctica. Fabulous, man. And I know you performed for us uh, at the in Diaspora Global Forum. And I know you've performed for Russell Peters, I think more than any other Indian American comic. So I think you have a, a stellar report, but apparently uh, there was some weird incident with a tennis player named Pete Sampras. So what were you doing in the locker room with this guy? Well, it wasn't just he, luckily. So I volunteered at the Cincinnati tennis tournament for many years, starting, I think, in 92. And then my whole family got involved, both my brothers, my mom, my dad still volunteers there. And COVID shut it down this year, which was a real bummer for him. He's been volunteering there for 25, 26 years now. And I started as a ball boy. I became a supervisor of ball boys. I kissed a lot of ass and got into the player locker room where I volunteered for six years, got to meet my idols, you know, Lendl, Edberg, Becker. I'm dating myself now. And at that time, no one would date me, so I'm dating myself. And I met Agassi, my all-time idol. And I had more pictures of him and posters of him in my room than anyone other than Michael Jordan and Pete Sampras. And this was a time where I had not yet done stand-up comedy on stage. I had a bunch of material written and I ended up performing it for him in the player locker room in a tiny training room, which is about 15 by 12 feet. And for the international people, I guess, four meters by, by two and a half meters. And it was his trainer, he and I, and a sports medicine doctor. And if you know anything about sports medicine doctors, they're dicks. And so he kept heckling me the entire time. See, I can say that now. I don't have to hitch any ride with any doctors. And he kept heckling me. And finally, Pete Sampras looked over him and he said, you know what? Can you be quiet for a second? I'm trying to listen to this kid. And that was my first ever gig in stand-up comedy before I, ever even hit the, before I even hit the stage. Fantastic, man. And I know that uh, I got to know you when you did the I Am Indian video that went crazy viral, right? And, I, you know, I looked at it recently. It said 50 million views. But I'm told your mother probably watched it 49 million times. <laughs> right? So that, that must have been a great crowning moment when your mother keeps watching the same thing over and over. Absolutely. You know, you can only be born once, but you can watch my video 49 million times, I guess. You know, the funny thing is it did not go viral on YouTube. It went viral on WhatsApp. WhatsApp is where all the VCs are. So when people go to YouTube, they go, it doesn't even have a million views. I go, you got to go to Facebook where Preeti Zintha shared it and that share has 20 million views. And then you have to add all these things up. Why can't VCs figure out metrics for WhatsApp videos, man? That's what I need. We run the internet anyway. Somebody give me that number. But somebody told me it's well over 50, 60 million views. I'm like, you know what? Fine. We'll be conservative and say 50. It was a great video. I know we're going to play a clip of yours. Why didn't you set that up for us? Well, you know, you wanted a two minute clip and I figured, all right, let's do this one, even though now it's six years old, but there's been a lot of discussion in our community. Are we Desi? Are we South Asian? Are we Indian? And I have various points of view about that. I'm not saying only call ourselves Indian or Hindustan or Bharat or whatever. I think there are different contexts for it, but it seems to be the video, even though I would still say my first solo show was a little bit better because it's also a lot longer. It was similar to Vijay's in that it was a, uh, it was kind of a deep dive into myself. But you know what? Here it is, the I Am Indian video that's been shared by Bollywood stars, played for Narendra Modi and all these other folks. So enjoy the I Am Indian video. Try to watch it all the way to the end because, you know, there's a joke finally. Okay, let's. I'm Indian, just Indian. I'm not South Asian any more than Russians or North Asian. I'm not Asian Indian or East Indian. There are 1.3 billion of us. We don't need a cardinal direction, okay? It's not our fault that Christopher Columbus got lost. Sure, we love our states, but there's strength in numbers. One out of every six human beings is Indian. So stop dividing us. The British already did that once. And we need to quit saying that we're not Indian because I wasn't born here or sound like this or eat that. Our hearts are Indian. We are feelers. We gave the world the romance of Bollywood films and the music of Ravi Shankar and Zubin Mehta and Lata Mangeshkar and Asha Bosle and the allure of the Kama Sutra. We are thinkers. We are great at math because we invented numbers. And we're pretty good at letters too. We are doctors and engineers and techies. And we mean business. We are the world's third largest economy and the wealthiest ethnic group in America. We are huge and efficient. India is all on one time zone. That way everybody in the country is still late, but at the same time. We never invade anyone because we already have everything. Chess, the ruler, the button, wireless communication, arranged marriage, flush toilets, steel, democracy. All us, all India. 
and your welcome world for yoga and elevating cricket into a multi-billion dollar sport and making food so good that you sailed across the planet to come have some. Our food is hot. Our country is hot. Our women are hot. Our men are lucky. Will the world praise we meditate. We practically invented religious tolerance and we gave you Mahatma Gandhi and pundits and gurus and karma and dharma and kismet and reincarnation. The motherland is magical and mystical and no matter who you are, you can find yourself here in incredible India. Jai Hind! I am Indian! And I'm late. Told you I was Indian. <laughs> Bravo! I'm I'm still get goosebumps when I uh, when I see that video. That you were so passionate, articulate, eloquent. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for making us all proud to be Indian. Thank you so much. I appreciate you including me. And I don't even refer to it as my video. It's our video, and it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. We catch so you back. We have. Uh, we're we're going to go to our other comics in just a minute. First of all, Rajiv, thank you so much for uh, being with us and and uh, and joining you and Vijay. We've already been terrific. People are watching all over the world, folks. Please tell us where you're watching from, and please ask a question if you have it. We'll do a round table with all our comedians in just a few minutes. And let's just look at some of the comments that have come in already. People watching from LA, Sonali says, hello. Jonathan Borstein's watching from the East Village. Pradnya is watching from Silver Spring, Maryland. Ellen's in New York City. Nitin's in Dharmshala, the uh, hometown of the Dalai Lama. Uh, Mira Rao's watching from Berkeley Heights in New Jersey. Uh, Ajay is watching from Quarantine, Chicago. I guess quarantine everywhere, right? And Pradnya <laughs> is watching from Denver. And uh, Apollo is watching from Montclair, New Jersey. And Devotam says, great to see everybody. Uh, Sonali says, tough times don't last, tough people do. So nice to uh, see everybody's comments. Victor's watching from Dallas. Jan is watching from Iowa. And uh, uh, Lote says, great Raji from Bhutan. So there's someone else watching from another part of South Asia. Uh, Miriam's watching from Hell's Kitchen in uh, New York City. Jam's watching from Lansing, Michigan. And Seema's watching from Miami. And my father is watching in Trivandrum in Kerala, India. Have you been, Rajiv? I have. I have been. I performed in all of the southern states of India and 11 states total. Oh, wow. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing. Uh, Raju says uh, he's watching in India, but he's from Indiana. Raju says, and Blossom's watching from Tennessee, and Kamlesh says, you're on point. So with that, uh, MR, let's bring on our next guest and give uh, Rajiv a few minutes off. Great. So you want to uh, go ahead and yeah, uh, set up need, our uh, next guest? We'll just remind everyone. Go, it's a girl time. We got to get Daya. Yes, so Daya is here with us, uh, and she's ready to go. So let's uh, bring her on stage, everyone. Daya Lakshmi Narayanan is with us from San Francisco. Great. Hi. Hey, Good to see you. I know you came to our Indiaspora Forum a couple of years ago as a storyteller, if I remember, right? Yes. So, and and looking at your background, I mean, you're, you got two degrees from MIT. You've been a venture capitalist. I mean, you're, you know, how did you kind of, weave your way to settle in on what you do today? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for hosting that event. Uh, a lot of comedians are storytellers, like Vijay had that great clip from Snap Judgment. Uh, I've been on Snap Judgment. I host The Moth. It's a great way for us to feel connected, especially in times like this. So storytelling as well as stand-up is really important to me. Um, how I've navigated my career is I just gravitate towards things that interest me. So uh, it could be math, it could be business, it could be stand up, it could be storytelling. And, you know, I just try to do the best I can and move through it. I've never felt constrained by what uh, society thinks I should do or what other people think I should do. I really follow my heart in creating what exactly my place in society should be. Oh, that's fantastic. And and are you known as a nerdy comic? 
for some reason. Thank you so much for saying that because I love being called a nerd. So some people might be offended, but I think it's a great term. It just means that you are a lover of knowledge, that you think deeply about subjects like math and science, and you can even be nerdy about stand-up and storytelling. So I think it's a compliment. So thank you. So, so what was your favorite course at MIT? Well, uh, this might offend some nerds because I know I'm supposed to say uh, electromagnetism or organic chemistry or something like that. But the best class that I took at MIT was actually a negotiations class because uh, in anything, in business, in comedy, in, in anything, you have to be able to articulate what your interests are, what your negotiation point is, and what you're willing to do if they don't meet your uh you know, what, what your interests are, you are willing to walk away. It has served me so well in every aspect of my life, including uh, going shopping with my mom. She's the best bargainer I know. So she could have taught that negotiations class. <laughs> that's great. And maybe that's some an opportunity for you to co-create and co-teach something you know, in the future. I, I remember one time there, there was a sign that specifically said, we will not take items back because it was like a used CD store and I was a kid and we, my brother and I bought the CD and it skipped it or had a scratch. And my mom was like, I'm going to go return it. And I was like, no, 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 please. You're embarrassing us. It says no returns. She not only got her money back, she got a free CD also. So <laughs> I think Indian women are the best negotiators on the planet. Oh man, that's amazing. So, so what are you doing these days? What's so what's new with you? What's uh, what's gone on in the last few months? Well, uh, you know, um, last few months have been uneventful. Uh, I don't really know what what else other people are doing, but. Uh, um, because of the pandemic, of course, our whole industry has moved online. So I've been doing Zoom shows. I've been doing Facebook Live, StreamYard events. Uh, there were a few outdoor shows that I did because uh, in California, the weather is nice. So I did some outdoor shows. But it's also the moth has moved a lot of things to virtual. So I've been hosting the moth online as well. And also, it's been a great time for writing projects. So I've worked on, um, you know, scripts for people, um, some pitches, some film stuff, some stuff for, for, you know, someone on television. So it's been a great time to start, you know, helping with writing and putting stuff out there because once production starts again, it's great to be ready. So it's been productive, but also I've been exercising every day. So I am swole. I'm a swole little Indian girl now. So well, show me your if you, if, you know what, Mr. I'm not going to show because I'm, I, I, you have to imagine it. Imagine <laughs> me being strong. If I show you, it'll take the mystery away. So just imagine that there's muscles all over here. But yeah, I've been exercising every day. So uh, that's been my biggest accomplishment. Fantastic. I, I know we have a great clip coming up. Set it up for us. Uh, so uh, we've talked a lot about South India for this whole show. I am very proud to be a Tamilian. Kamala Harris is half to million. Um, Mindy Kaling is half to million, I think. Uh, Padma Lakshmi is to million. Uh, so I am very excited to uh, be a, a Tamil speaker. And so uh, my mom uh, would say these things to me and uh, that's how I learned Tamil. So this clip is basically uh, bilingual. So if you don't understand Tamil, it's okay. I'll explain what goes on. Great. Let's uh, roll. My, my parents are from Tamil Nadu. We speak Tamil. I, I speak it as a first language. But uh, my mom tried to raise me by telling me Tamil sayings in hopes that I would grow up as a good person. But let me tell you some of these Tamil sayings. They make no sense. One of them is, which just means, don't sit there like a piece of smashed tamarind. <laughs> Is it more lively? Like, what? <laughs> and there's another saying, uh, which means the lady wanted to get pregnant, so she went around some spiritual trees and then she touched her stomach immediately. That just makes me never want to go around trees again. <laughs> I will stop hiking, okay? Is that birth control in Tamil Nadu? Here's my favorite, okay? Uh, this is when my brother and I wanted to be impulsive. My mom would be like, 
நினைச்சா நெருப்புல மூத்திரம் போக முடியாது which means just cuz you feel like it you can't pee in the fire is this some high honor in chennai this guy is an iit gold medalist but last week he got to piss in that fire no Wow. Hey, this, I, I can feel this because I'm also Tamilian and I, my mother used to say some of these same sayings, right? That didn't make any sense. Amar, what's your favorite Tamil saying? Uh, I'm trying to think. It's uh, the one you do this, you go around your face to touch your nose. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to think of that one, right? My mother yeah. always used to say you're doing this. You're yeah. going all the way around to touch your nose. Yeah, yeah. that's great. It it involves uh, uh uh the shortest distance between point A and point B, so it's math and language at the same time. Exactly. But no, that's terrific. That brought back so much, you know, memories of uh, Chennai and 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 Tamar. So thank thank you so much and uh, we'll come back to you in a short while, Daya. Okay? Thank you. and here's kambui says i have tamarind at home getting the visual and he's having a laugh and kambui also says piss in the fire doesn't sound like fun <laughs> all right daya we'll see you uh, shortly and let's uh, come back and let's uh, take a look at our final guest you can introduce him for us Emma. yeah hey uh, anubhav anubhav paul from all the way from india he's actually virtually joining us the other three comics are all in the us on the united states of america but anubhav is virtually here let's welcome him sorry uh, hey wait a minute uh, there's a typo there my friend it says anubhav not anubhav did we screw up on the on the uh, side uh, shri screw this up or what uh, not at all hi amar hi shri um Before I start I have to let you guys know it's 7 o'clock in the morning in Mumbai where I am and this lockdown has led to lots of people thinking that they're artists so there's an Indian uncle in the house next to mine who's practicing classical music and a number of wild dogs have gone crazy um and there's a, there's a lot of rampant noise so I would like to apologize on behalf of uh, anyone who thinks that they're talented in the lockdown because i'm suffering as a result of that um <laughs> and i'm sure many people feel that way about my comedy as well but to answer your question mr um anubhav in sanskrit means experience uh um, i'm bengali i'm from the east of india my parents uh, like all bengalis tried to be extra clever and named me anubhav uh and they got that name on their honeymoon from the son of the assistant food and beverage manager of the hotel they were staying in in Srinagar and his name was Anubhav and and uh, they called me that and now i have to answer questions like this at 7 o'clock in the morning for 43 years of my life <laughs> oh man you you on their honeymoon they meet the assistant food and beverage manager he makes yeah. such an impression on them they yes. remember that name and yes. name that yes. oh yes. my god This and I ra- I ran into this guy. Uh, my parents ran into this guy many years later. He's much older, and uh, they asked him. They're like, "How's your son Anubhav?" And he said, "Well, he's changed his name to Anubhav now." <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's crazy! You know, my mother and father named me after the OB who delivered me in the hospital. His name was Madhavan, and they called me Madhavan. So at least I have a much more of a normal story. This is weird. You're yeah. <laughs> This is and there's a there's a, I think there's a big Bollywood star called Madhavan um and yes. it could be you as well you know that could Absolutely you know, I mean yeah I'm, I'm going there but tell me something New York Times called you an intelligent comedian is that an oxymoron Yes yes <laughs> yeah that's why I stopped reading them um I I think it's it's not really hard to be a comedian in India you just have to observe things I just find uh are uh, us to be a very funny people but um, one of the easy things in india is not very many people are documenting how funny we are on a regular basis um every day you know people say crazy thing i i have brilliant experiences uh even i i get material doing comedy in india um someone was talking about chennai tamil nadu um a bunch of our comedians were talking about that i remember doing a show in chennai once 
and it was in a new hotel and the the person that ran the hotel thought it was very boring to do stand up comedy on a normal stage so he had us perform in a swimming pool uh gets better this is all this is what the american influence does to india it gets better he said he saw this in the us somewhere now the pool was a circular pool so you would start a story you would begin saying something logical like I think I have a crush on my mother-in-law whatever some outrageous premise and you would float away. <laughs> and I remember seeing a Tamilian very posh Tamilian couple sitting at the front row saying he's coming back he's coming back. <laughs> you know so I I just all I have to do is just write that down. That's one of the benefits of living here. I used to live in the United States but it was just uh it was too nice a country, too optimistic. I just had to come back. Wow. and i know you do a lot of movie scripts and stuff like that what's the craziest one you've been involved with oh in god movie? i mean any any movie shoot in india is crazy um i mean more than the shoot itself it's uh you know it's the stuff that can it's the stuff that can what i like about both america and india is the optimistic culture except uh, you know it's a very can do culture new india is a very can do culture as you know i'm a big fan of india sport and i know you guys explore this but what happens is It's easy to be a can-do culture in the US. You just start up this that and the other. You can have a can-do culture in India, but nothing really works, you know? So, I remember we were shooting for something in the middle of the monsoons and the producer says, "We need a helicopter." And they were like, "Where are we going to get a helicopter, man? There's a thunderstorm outside." He said, "I know someone." And the, he called that guy and that guy was like, "No, no, I'm not giving my helicopter." <laughs> This guy was like, "Please, we've known each other from school." please give me a helicopter uh, and that someone else said forget about him i know a better helicopter you know and the thing is in india all you have to do is just document these conversations um and you get a script you don't even have to work that hard this is crazy man we could go on and on i know you brought us a nice clip can you set it up for us yeah so this is a little bit different um uh this is a show i did for the bbc in the united kingdom for new year's eve where they get comedians from all over the world to tell stories and i wanted to do a little bit about the british in india so this is what that is awesome let's roll the tape sri hello uh, my name is anuv apal i'm a comedian from mumbai india this is my first time doing a show in the united kingdom i am from india uh, i've been here a couple of months i'm told anuv up your english is very good you're very comprehensible uh, now here's the thing i did not want my english to be very good I did not even want to speak it. But 250 years ago, <laughs> some British people came over to India and told us speak like this. This is a better language. And we said, "All right." We were quite impressed. You had wigs, you were cross-dressing, it was good. <laughs> fans of the empire in the house <laughs> and we were learning you said yeah the english is an easy language write down salisbury <laughs> he said no no it gets easier that was a hard one gets easier write down chevon <laughs> it was going well it was going fine suddenly 1947 middle of the night you guys just left <laughs> just ran away world's first brexit <laughs> leaving a generation of indians like my father sounding like this <laughs> like a love child of downton abbey and a bangalore call center <laughs> and we asked you britain we said what what are we now in india supposed to do with this accent <laughs> you said we don't know yet <laughs> but maybe in 60 70 years when your economy picks up you've got that accent when our credit cards don't work you can answer our phones <laughs> is that all right ramesh or shall i call you theodore <laughs> she's better it's going well though the empire was going well for a while you gave us things we did not have You said India you have a lot of malaria disgusting you're dying it's horrible here have some gin and tonic 
He said, that's not bad. Gin and tonic, these people are not bad. Uh, it's very nice people, gin and tonic. Then you said, here, have some tea. They're like, oh, this is very nice. This is, this is our tea. <laughs> Treachery is this? <laughs> They're selling our stuff back to us. <laughs> what are they calling this scam? The British Empire. Not bad. <laughs> oh, I, I love the Brexit joke, man. That was <laughs> that was unbelievable. Uh, I, I, said, I, I find history quite interesting. You know, yeah. it just uh, I was quite fascinated by a handful of Englishmen uh, came over, took over a country, and. I guess it's, it's, you know, I mean, a lot has been written about it, but without them, in many ways, you and I would have no language to speak to each other in. Absolutely, absolutely. Th thank you so much, Anivab, uh, to be correct. Uh, let's let's uh, get Sri back on and and maybe the rest of the gang. Sri? Uh, yeah, we we have our team standing by. We're going to bring Daya, Vijay, and Rajiv on in just a second. Uh, we want to remind everyone to please uh, share this show with your friends and family. They can watch live or later. We're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and on LinkedIn. So please hit share and they can watch afterwards. Uh, so many great comments coming in from all over. We do have a question I wanted to start off with. Jan asks, how do you handle American politics in your humor or do you? So let's start with Vijay, Daya, and then Rajiv, and then we'll come to Anub Um. I mean, I, I, well, I think it will be a little bit different It'll because I mean, because I consider myself an American. So I think it might be a question maybe more for um, Anubab. But um, but at first, I really didn't talk that much about politics. But I think um, like it was really much more about kind of maybe identity politics. I had to talk about just being a like showing what an Indian was when I started. Um, and having people understand that Indian parents are not that different from other parents. Um, but, um, but now I really um, am leaning more toward into talking about what's just what's going on in the country. But, um, but I just see that as me being a comedian as opposed to me, to me being an Indian. An Indian? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Let's go to Daya with the same question. Yeah, first of all, thank you for not thinking that I am Vijay and Mindy Kaling because we're both brown women wearing a blue top. So I appreciate I that you can tell us apart. So it's, it's very nice. Um, I love talking about politics in my act, American politics particularly, because um, it's, it's, it has everything. It has drama. It has dumb people. It has powerful people that you can make fun of. It's, it's great. Um, but the problem with talking about politics is as soon as you get a joke to work, the news cycle moves so quickly that you can't keep using that joke. So one of the first political jokes I ever wrote was how um, you know Obama's uh, campaign slogan was hope and change and McCain's was viva McCain. And I said, are our standards so low for this man's presidency that viva is keep living keep living is what we're saying for John McCain. So obviously John McCain is dead. I can't do that joke anymore, it's mean. So the news cycle moves so quickly, you have to just throw away the jokes that you're proud of and then tell them to India Spora uh, 10 years later. <laughs> Thank you, let's go to Rajiv. American politics is a very big part of what I do. I did a tour, I do these solo shows every couple of years and last year I ended up performing on Capitol Hill to some Republicans and Democrats. It was called the man in the middle. And I lean a little left, but I still consider myself in the center. And I'm launching an online talk show called the man in the middle, where I'm going to be trying to bring people together and all that kind of stuff. You know, I was talking to a booker, a comedy booker, and he goes, why isn't your stand up act about what your blog posts are about? That's what you really care about. I go, but no one cares about this stuff. He goes, make them care. That's your job, make them care. He goes, I saw your show, because I launched it at his club, the Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach, California. And he goes, you go on and on and on about the year 1994 and how 1994 was the greatest year in American history. And he goes, I don't know if I agree. I never even thought about that before. Who cares? But you care. And you care 
so much that by the end of the show, people are going, oh my gosh, maybe it was 94, maybe it was 95, maybe it was the 80s. All of this kind of stuff and the hook into it was make America great again. I was wondering where should we go back to? And he goes, you need to get people to care. And he goes, your passion will get them to care. And really that's just what, I, what it's been about for me is getting up there and talking about what you want to talk about. They always say that which is most personal is most general. So make it so. Excellent, thank you. Let's go to Anubhav. Um, no, I, Rajiv's point is, is very valid. You know, I think you have to sort of love the subject matter. I particularly love uh, American political opinion from ill-informed Indian uncles or people with zero stake in the country who've never even visited and have no interest in visiting. Um, I love I love baseless illiterate opinion. It, it's I did not know that it become the foundation for many actual political opinions. That's a whole separate thing. But um, I'm, I'm fascinated. Uh, in my building, uh, there are uh, Indian uncles who uh, say things to me like, I'll tell you who'll win. I'll tell you. It's no problem. My cousin lives in San Jose. I've been talking to him. I'll tell you who'll win. You don't have to stay up and watch the election. I'll tell you. Who'll win. And I love that. I love that sense of ignorance meeting confidence. And, and then again, you know, it writes itself. You just have to steal from people. <laughs> Here are some great comments coming in. Jay Mundell, a wonderful photographer, uh, says Anuvab has always been great with his humor. A uh, lot of comments coming in about everybody uh, speaking here. Jody says hilarious. Vebhav says uh, loving this. Uh, Victor says true that. Uh, had a nice laugh. What a fabulous treat, says Prem. Thank you for making this possible. And Thurlok says, this is a nice show. Uh, Sajid is watching from Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. Lots of new folks here. Uh, Daryl has a comment about the tamarind joke earlier. says, I'm thinking of tamarind chutney with Shahina. You guys are making me hungry in Richmond Hill. He's from Trinidad. Tamarind is something they use in the cooking there. My mom is watching from Kerala and in India. Hi, Amma, I love you. Thanks for watching. Uh, Victor says, laughter is the best medicine, but if you laugh for no reason, you need medicine. So laughing for all the right reasons, great show, much needed laughter. Just great to have all these comments. I know that MR has more questions. Uh, yeah, so uh, during COVID, what are the creative things the four of you have done? Because it took away this whole uh, great connection and personal interaction with audiences, uh, you being on stage and super connecting with these folks. So what are what are some of the things you've been doing, interesting, creative things that made you a better comic? Uh, <laughs> whoever wants it. I mean, you don't have to go first, uh, Vijay. You can let someone else take it. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Come on, guys, get creative. All right, there we go. We put Dai on this. Spot. OK, great. Uh, happy to do it. So, it, you know, in, in March, the, the last show I did was um, as part of a tour of Irish comedians. And they had a dropout because the flights were canceled. And so they called me and they said, can you fill in? And I said, you know, I'm not Irish at all, like no percent. And they're like, but our prime minister is Indian. That, that was how they sold me on the show. So I did that show and it was great. And I'm so glad I did. That was the last show I did in March. And people were so happy. And then after that, everything moved online. So some comedians don't want to do Zoom shows because it's not that same feeling of being in person. And it'll never be. But it's still very interesting because during this time, we've kind of had to figure out on Zoom how to unmute people, how to make sure people aren't talking over each other, how we can still hear. And one interesting thing that's happening is people are either Venmoing the comedians directly or you don't have to wait for a comedy club booker to book you and pass you and whatever. You can just take your comedy straight to the audience that you want to. So it's really disintermediated a lot of the industry. And actually some of these Zoom shows pay much better than a comedy club where you're waiting to make some low dollar amount. So technology has been really interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing how it will continue even when we're allowed to meet in person. For example, a lot of people in the disability community can come to these Zoom shows. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, accessible to, you know, people with hearing loss uh, sometimes, but, uh, you know, people who are in wheelchairs who can't enter a comedy club because there's no ramp. So it's opened up to people who can't find a babysitter or who, you know, don't want to go out at night. So 
uh, I'm getting a new audience and it's a really exciting way to leverage technology to be able to still perform. Great. Vijay? Oh, okay. Now me. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, I agree a lot of what, what uh, Daya just said. Um, I think one thing that I am really find fascinating is that I can uh, do shows with and, inter and interact, interact with people like today in different countries and, um, and get engaged with people that I would never be able to engage if I was physically, if I had to physically go there. So, um, so that has been fantastic. And I think that like really trying to figure out as a, as a performer, um, I get so much from being, from having an audience just talk to me or being in the room or seeing how they're reacting, even like out of the corner of my eye that informs me so much. And that is the hard part about performing into this void. So I'm really trying to figure out how, how do we um, make it better? Like I am working on trying to create something that's a little more interactive and a little more audience focused. So um, in, in my shows. And so th that's one of the things that, that I'm working on as well as I think everybody, as well as a podcast and a new, and a new show. So, so doing all those things right now. Super. Raji? I love that. I echo a lot of what they said and disintermediated is a great word and is about as long as Daya's last name. So that's really going to stay with me. That word disintermediated. That's totally true. I think to build upon that point, one thing that's such a challenge for comedians online, but the reason it still works is because even if you don't have the bandwidth necessarily, it's harder for singers and for dancers who can freeze and whatever else, but you know, they're still doing their thing with comedy though, especially in a comedy club, if you saw Anuba, he, you know, he did this huge gig in Britain and it's in a large theater. And a lot of us have had the privilege of performing in theaters with each other or without, but in a comedy club where you have low ceilings, everybody's eating the same onion rings, drinking the same beer, watching the same show. Even the bad seats are good because the comic cannot pick on you or you're sitting in the front and you get picked on. Everybody's having the same experience. You take that to the Zoom virtual world and their pets and their kids and their different bandwidth. And, oh, I think they look like they're on a 27 inch iMac. And, oh my gosh, I'm on this, you know, Microsoft Surface. And everybody's having a different experience, which is what makes it so hard. Well, we did our tour of India in 2013. We got one of the most insightful questions we ever had. This is Azra Usman, Hari Kondabolu and I, and I still remember this. We, somebody asked, you know, what is it like performing for a corporate versus a comedy club? Because in a corporation, everybody knows everybody. And in a comedy club, nobody knows anybody. And we're like, that is the most, one of the most insightful questions I've ever heard. That was a great question. So you, what you try to do is you try to bring people in so they have roughly the same experience. And one thing you understand, and I'll wrap it up at this point, is there's often a five second lag time. So you're performing and the audience hears it five seconds later. Now, luckily I'm, I've been preparing for this my whole life because I've played the American South. You know, you can't say the Indian South because that's how India and America are different. See, in India, they keep the smart people in the South. And if anybody's getting offended, I could say that because I'm a Jati Malay by name. Thank you. Uh, Anuba? Well, yeah, I think Rajiv, uh, Vijay, those points are absolutely correct. Uh, Zoom's been very interesting. You know, uh, Zoom has given me insight into Indian households I did not want to see. Um, <laughs> And uh, that's one way in which I'm quite hopeful that the vaccine is out. Um, I remember doing, I don't know how Zoom etiquette is in the United States. I'd love to know um, on how people behave on Zoom. But I remember doing one show and there was a guy who was watching it on his phone. He didn't care. He was shaving. Um, there was another lady who was watching. And I think her she husband was, was just in his underwear and he just walked by behind. He just kind of peeked in like this and he said, I don't like it. And he left which was probably the best assessment of my show I've ever gotten for anyone. Um, so there was uh, there's some high quality. Sometimes I'd hear like in the middle of the show, I hear mama, and that's it. And then the people would go dark. So I don't know if they died. You know, so um, I, I, I'm assuming people in the United States who are pig buddy would uh, maybe be a little more involved with Zoom. I don't know. But I, I, I've had, you know, it's really distracting. You know, sometimes I, I get like petty jealousy because I'll be doing a show with some people and I'd be like, even a colleague, and I'd be like, that's a really nice house. <laughs> she bought that with comedy? You know, so the, some of that stuff happens. So it's, it's uh, yeah, Zoom's been really distracting. 
Indians don't even pay attention at their own wedding. How can you expect yeah. them to pay attention to a comedian? Like <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. the nature of this, you know, information overload. So they're, they're not going to pay attention no matter what. It's not you. But they work even hard to so they can get away from their family. That's the only competition, right? The longer quarantine goes on, Daya, like it's better. Like this is our escape. So that's, that's one thing working for us. I got a pet peeve I got to ask about Indians in general, right? Uh, we tend to Americanize the pronunciation of our names. And our friends in the Latin Latino community make it clear. My name is Jose Rodriguez, whereas I don't see any of you kind of sounding those names exactly to be like how your parents would call you, right? So what, what's with that in our culture, Indian American culture? We don't go to the exact pronunciation of our names. Well, I mean, my parents can barely pronounce the word John. I had a friend named John and they kept calling him uh, Jan, you know, like, you know, so I don't hold it against someone for not being able to say something that's not in their native language. Also, my first name isn't Tamil. My first name is Sanskrit. So the actual pronunciation is Daya with an aspirated D, which does not exist in Tamil. So my people can't even say my own name. So I can't expect Americans who speak English to say Daya with an aspirated DH. So I figure if someone is doing the best they can, then I'm happy with that. And that means I can call John Nancy. So I feel so empowered by that. <laughs> Anybody else want to add to it? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, so I, you guys know, my name is Vijay, which is a man's name. So I have that issue, that problem where people expect that I'm going to be a man. <laughs> That's one thing. Thanks, mom and dad for that. Um, but um, I was VJ. Like my parents introduced me when they brought me into school. They would say, this is my daughter, VJ. And I was VJ. Even at the beginning of my comedy career, I had headshots that just had the letters V and J because I thought saying my actual name would be just too hard. And I was doing stand up in New York, working a crappy job as a receptionist during the day, doing stand up at night. And I woke up one morning and I just was like, I can't mispronounce my own name anymore. That was the th turning point for me. Was I can't say my name is VJ anymore. And I and um and then all these people who had known me as VJ, they suddenly I was like, uh, I'm VJ. And so it was like, so it was a shift. But it was it was that I it was important for me to say it properly. And it's okay. Anybody else can say it whatever way they want, as long as I'm saying it correctly. Awesome. And. Uh Shri, you're, you're muted. Uh, here are some more comments. Munisha says, this is so fun. Thank you. Uh, Indra says, this is fantastic. Secret, Vijay gets all her talent from her sister. Oh, Indra. oh damn it. <laughs> I didn't see that one. Thanks. You didn't see the rest of the comment before you I were cheering already. I didn't see that and, one. Uh, Rajiv, we have a comment for you. Kamlesh says, uh, we look like twins. Grand job by all. I remember Vijay from a gig for Thai Tampa. Thank you very much, Kamlesh. I appreciate that. I've, a lot of us have Zoom fatigue, and I'm thinking about going on TaskRabbit to see if I can hire Neil Kashkari to sit in for me for my Zoom call. So if anyone knows Neil Kashkari, we're both brown, we're both bald, we're both in California. He could sit in for me, and I could go, you know, take a nap or something. Or you He's can. The one who was, who was uh, the uh, czar in charge of the uh, the last Sorry. recession? The uh, payments to $800 billion he got to uh, handle and, and fix. Daryl has a question. When are you all performing next online? So who'd like to start? Yeah, Vijay, I'm going to be doing a show January 14th, and I'll I'll put that on my Facebook. Uh, so that's, that's my next online show. Awesome. Uh, go ahead, folks. Uh, Anubhav? Well, I'm doing a show tonight. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's for uh, it's for a computer company. It's for an American computer company, half of whose employees are in the United States, and half of whose employees are going to be woken up in India and forced to watch this nonsense. Um, I, I guess I feel bad for companies that have to do holiday parties on Zoom and have to get some sort of entertainment. Um, you know, I guess they should just give them cash. I think just give them some money and just tell them that's better than this. But I just have one quick point on names. Uh, there's a very interesting trend I'm seeing in India, which is uh, preparing kids to be ready to go to college in the United States. So 
I don't see traditional Indian names anymore, especially in the upper middle classes, urban people who are quite convinced they want their kids to go abroad to study. So with that in mind, they're giving them really short names. Ved, Veer, if they're men, or if they're women, it's Tanya, Shania, which are not even traditional Indian names. They're more like, everyone sounds like a restaurant in Tehran. You know, like they just really, I haven't run into an Abhishek, a Mohan, a Sulakshana, like those sorts of names I don't see anymore. You know, like the the old sort of, or Daya, which is a great name, Vijay, you know, like you don't see, I don't see Rajivs anymore. You know, you run into a young person, he said, what's your name? Arya. I was like, that's not, that's like a web series. What is, is that even a name? Like, you know, like, so you don't see that very, I, I don't, I, I don't know if the opposite is happening in the United States where the young people yeah, are reading. the opposite is happening in the United States in that white people are taking all of our names. <laughs> We're taking their jobs and they're naming their kids Chandra and Priya. And I'm like, I want that shit back. That belongs to us. Uh, oh, to answer the question, I have multiple shows coming up, one tomorrow, one Sunday, Three on New Year's Eve, two of them on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. So you can go to my website, diacomedy.com, D-H-A-Y-A, comedy.com. You can pronounce it Daya, Daya, or Daya. I don't care. Just come to the show. <laughs> and we, we have everyone's Twitter handle on the screen. And, of course, you can Google them and, and find out more as well. Rajiv, when's your next performance? Tomorrow, actually, it's an event for Georgia. And it's funny that you talk about the names because I had to introduce Ravi Patel and Sheetal Shaith. And they told me, they're like, you're the only one who pronounces them right. It's Patel. And I've had Patels tell me it's Patel. I'm like, you are wrong. It is not Patel. It's Patel. <laughs> Sit down. Don't, don't, don't mess with it. It's funny what you were saying that, like, do, do we do that? Maybe I say Rajiv Satyal. It's just sometimes when you do that, you say Sheetal Shaith or you say, Hari Kondabolu and names like that, you sort of rest in peace, turn into Alex Trebek, because he so famously nailed all of the pronunciations for languages around the world. So if you want to follow me, at Funny Indian on Instagram, and you'll see posts of my shows and all that good stuff. But lots of shows coming up. Sounds like a lot of us have great things going on, and that's just a tribute to the South Asian, Desi, Indian community out there. I want to just uh, do a shout out to my friend Aladdin, who was one of the earliest stand-up comics of South Asian origin, Bangladeshi, New Yorker, who used to uh, have, uh, do these stand-up shows 25 plus years ago. And he was, he was called by the New York Times the funniest South Asian in the nation. And he himself would say that's not saying much because there wasn't a lot of competition. Today, there is a lot of competition and you're all doing so well and we're, we're so happy uh, to see your success. I'm gonna read a few more comments and then we'll go for final thoughts from everybody. Uh, like, uh, Victor says, uh, you said it right, Daya. You did catch my attention. You'll go places, my friend. I do wish the same for all. Thank you for putting on a great event. Bless you all, my friends. Janelle uh, is laughing at some point, laughing again. <laughs> and Janelle has advice for in diaspora and for me. I would capture those funny moments and replay them. And maybe we should we should uh, put them together. Trilok says you are all great. And uh, Rajiv, you should know that Apollo says Neil Kashkari is hot. So that's uh, uh, good for you to know. I'm trying to replace Rajiv with Anil. So there you go. I guess our names are going away. So uh, there you go. And uh, Seema says, hey, Vijay, great to see you after your show in Michigan. Rakshay Patra, you brought the house down. Uh, and Apollo also points out that he was a Federal Reserve governor. And Jody says, you are all terrific. Rajiv performed famously at our Diwali event five years ago. Now, infamously or famously, I don't know why. Yeah, what do both mean? <laughs> The yeah, and then Daryl says, I guess my parents were ahead of the naming trend, calling me Daryl Ganesh Sukdeo. And uh, uh, Murli says, MR, you call yourself MR, spell it out and insist people say the full name. Okay, say, say Madhavan Rangaswamy really fast. Madhavan Rangaswamy. Rangaswamy. Got it. That's not so hard. What's the R though? What's the R? Uh, I just compress my two initials, Madhavan and Rangaswamy to MR. And I got to tell you the story of how this came up. I was working in Texas, right? And I go into this really redneck company and I'm supposed to be managing some of the parts of the factory and all that, right? I walk in, nobody can understand my name. And one guy goes, you know, there's a show here called Dallas and there's a guy called JR. So we're going to call you MR, and that's that's how my name happened. Was this company in Dallas, where I mean, in, in Houston, where I was working. 
So I, I've not, I've heard, I've known you for a decade. I have not heard that story before. It's, yeah. it's a great it's a story. JR story, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Janelle is agreeing to some of you and she's also still laughing. Lippy <laughs> says, uh, uh, Lippy says we're taking their jobs and they're oh, taking Lippie, their Roy, oh, I love Lippy. Watch so Lippy on all the news stations. She's the best doctor ever. Yeah, she is a great doctor on TV. And I'm just going to do a plug for our next episode of this show. Uh, I mean, sorry, for our other show that we run. We read the Sunday New York Times out loud like crazy people every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. We've been doing it for five years. And our guest is Lippy Roy, a fabulous doctor on MSNBC, NBC, and more. And she'll be with us 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. I know that MR will be sleeping at that time, will not be watching us live at that. Yeah, at that yeah. Uh, let's, let's look at a couple more comments and then we will go for the final thoughts. Uh, Kamlesh is giving us a smiley face. And uh, so articulate, so hilarious, spot on, terrific, encore, come back, make it happen. Wow. And uh, this is an awesome show, entertaining program. This is just amazing. Uh, MR, you need a cowboy hat. <laughs> and uh, uh, says Raj, and Shoba says, uh, superb, hilarious, so much fun. Thanks, MR, and salute to these wonderful comedians. Uh, love it. Uh, oh my God, Lippy says, you made my day, week, and year. Laughter is the best medicine. Doctor uh, should know that. And Victor says, love it. So let's go around for some final thoughts. Anubab, we'll start with you. I'm just going to talk about the comments. These are such positive comments. Um, I did a show for in Bangalore recently uh, for a senior citizens thing, and I don't think they had figured out like how to do the comments thing. And there was, I think the first comment was, "Is he bald?" Like I think they were having a discussion about me, but in the chat. And and the other person said, "He looks really old." And then somebody else said, "Is he the comedian or is he just a person talking?" And I I heard while I was doing the show, there was a full discussion. It was early days of the pandemic. Full discussion. These are well thought out, quite supportive, optimistic, articulate comments. So I'm just pleased that that happened. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anuvab. And everyone can find him on Twitter, Anuvab Pal, at Anuvab Pal. Thank you very much. Let's go to Vijay. Wait, what is the question? <laughs> I've been drinking this whole time. So is this the final thought, like Jerry Springer? Um, I'm just, I hope I get the vaccine soon. I hope we all get the vaccine very soon so that we can uh, hang out and hug each other. I don't know, that sounds really creepy, doesn't it? Um, but um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to <sighs> a little bit of an end to this, but uh, keep on going, everyone. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's go now to Rajiv. Well, thanks very much in diaspora or in diaspora, in the, however you, we got to talk about your pronunciation. So make sure you wrap up with those final thoughts for us. Well, we had a great time. It was a lot of fun. And I echo what Anubhav is saying because, you know, they say that balding is not a choice, bald is. And so I shaved my hair off because Anubhav, I can relate to you 100% here because people used to look at me when I would talk to them on shows or elsewhere. And this is how they look at me the whole time. They'd look me in the eye and they would look up at my hair. Look me in the eye, look up at my hair. And they're trying to figure out, I know what they're trying to figure out. Is he balding or is he not? And I'm like, I felt like a woman. Hey guys, my eyes are up here, okay? So now when I've shaved my hair off, it's just bam. This is why I have nothing in my background. Just that's it. You just focus on me. That's all you need. I want to give a shout out to Kerala. Somebody asked if I performed in Kerala. I did perform in Kochi with my cousin, Garav Chandidas, who had made a trip down there uh, from Bombay with me. And I got to give a shout out to Gujarat since I'm married to a Gujarati and give a bale bale to all the Punjabis out there and my parents who are watching. So thanks to mom and dad for supporting my career. You uh, really, I want to thank all the parents and all the families out there who are supporting us because without y'all, we, we really cannot do it. So thanks very much and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Diwali if you're still, still celebrating it. And Happy Hanukkah. Yeah, uh, the, uh, Rajiv is at Funny Indian. Please find him there. And I forgot to highlight Vijay's Twitter. She's Vijay underscore Nathan on Twitter. Let's go to Daya. Uh, so I, I just want to say, uh, Anubhav, I feel for you. I'm so sorry that those people were talking shit about you. Uh, I just want to say when uh, when the, the invitation for this went out on Twitter and a bunch of stuff, I got so many uh, Indian bras on LinkedIn 
trying to hook up with me and they had no game. So Anubhav, <laughs> if you think your comments are bad, try being an Indian woman in comedy. Like one of the comments was like, I, I work in wastewater, can you help me? I'm like, what the hell? I why are you trying to get with me on LinkedIn? Another comment was, so you are doing comedy routine or what? And like, or what is how he ended his LinkedIn invitation to me. So I just wanna say, be a woman, then come back to me, tell me how it is. Uh, I also want to say in honor of Lippy, uh, I read the New York Times where I am like number 23 million in line for the vaccine. I don't have pre-existing conditions. I'm not a senior. Uh, you know, I'm not a frontline worker. So if you can't get the vaccine, since everyone has agreed laughter is the best medicine, don't inject yourself with bleach. Please come to a comedy show. I don't know what it will do to prevent COVID, but I'm going to pass it off as medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you you got a you got a nice uh, comment there as well, and Kamle sends a here here too. Let's go to Mr. for some final thoughts, and then we'll let wow. everybody get on with their day. I, I tell you, I knew we wanted some fun, we wanted some laughter, we wanted to laugh and forget what's happening out there in the world, and I think this show far exceeded that. And I think this means we got to bring you guys back uh, next year to do kind of a recap of what happened in 2021. Hopefully that'll be much better. Maybe part of it is in person, maybe part of it is virtual, or maybe we all meet at the next in diaspora. Rajiv, that's how we pronounce this is in diaspora. And we hope we'll have a forum and all you guys can come and all you guys can perform. So that is my uh, New Year's resolution for next year. All of you come perform at our forum next year. So Fantastic! You guys have been phenomenal. This is this was amazing. Uh, I'm still laughing. You can see I had such a great time. Uh, Janelle says this is so good to see. We need more forums that show us in another light, another instead of all the stereotypes we see. So that is just great. Ellen says uh, laughter is the best medicine. Hope to see you again. And Lippy says that if it makes you feel better, Dr. Fauci is like three hundred thousandth in line. Although Biden will move him up the chain. So wait, he's a doctor, he's the doctor, and he's 79 and he's only 300,000th in line? Then I must be 300 millionth in line. So go ahead, Raji. Hey, Shri, do you want to do a screenshot of all of us? Everybody look in the camera and you get a yeah, picture. So you get sure. Inadvertently, when we do screenshots, everybody's got their eyes closed. So let's do that. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, give me one second. And we'll just say to everyone, thank you so much for being with us and for joining us. We really appreciate uh, your your time. And thank you, everyone. I'll just check if everyone's eyes are open. Uh, and they are, <laughs> so that's, that's great. And um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, please follow us on the various channels. And we'll be back again. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye-bye.